I learned to say no to stuff, learned to be more efficient, started looking for other sources because I think as an entrepreneur and as the hard, hard work, it's, a, it's the same thing that drives us. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that helps us be successful, but it's also our blind spot to, that we can't see ourselves. And that's the pride of like, I'm an entrepreneur. I can do all things. Look at me because I've done it. Look at, I've got to this point, right? And I, that's the hard part to get over is I'm not good at everything and nor should I be. Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson and Marcus Kersey. And we have our guest date, Danny Putnam. He is the uh, co-founder of Lurong Living. They, uh, well, you guys started with a deer antler uh, supplement and yep. have expanded out since then. And we're going to be digging into your entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. So we can help everyone out there li that's listening and go, oh, Someone else has got crazy shit going on in their if, life, too. If, if you think you're getting all the answers today, you're wrong. But hopefully uh, you can pick up a couple pieces and uh, we, all, we all have a chance to learn from each other. That's why we're here. Get yeah, a few. For sure. Yeah. Because your story was like ours, right? It was just first time, easy try. I mean, just straight to the finish line, right? No no hurdles along <laughs> right, the way. Right the no top. lessons. No mistakes. Yep. No second guessing. Um, everything we did was profitable every time. No dollar waste. the whole time. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. No issue with boundaries, with family. I mean, we write up you know, 40 hours a week so from the whole start. Dude, yep. right? I've been doing like 32, 32 <laughs> hours a week the whole time. <laughs> but bird watch. You've been doing too much. You could mix in a 40-hour week if you stop watching well, the birds. Well, if I count the bird watching, it, it's it's. Six 60 hour work week. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, man. What's your story? How did we get here? Yeah, I, um, so back in college, I went to Stanford, was playing ball, and I was like, look, I want to do three things. I want to make the big leagues. I want to start a business from scratch, and I want to write a book. I'm not really sure which order they were supposed to go in, but I made it to the big leagues in 2007 mm -hmm. and with the A's and got to experience the, the grind and the, and the fun of, of doing that, being able to see a childhood dream come true. And, um, but, uh, obviously, you know, you never can write your own story. So if it was still my choice, I think looking back, I would have been like, I'm still going to be there when I'm 40, I'll be one of those guys. Uh, God had different plans. It wasn't, uh, I, I ended up not, you know, 2011 was my last year. Uh, but it's just as much as you can't write your own story. It's a good thing because if we wrote our own story, it'd be boring. Really. We'd usually write it to be something controlled. Um, if you'd have told me that I would have been enjoying life probably more and feeling like I was making a bigger impact in the world and really living out who I am better uh, after starting a deer antler supplement while I was still playing ball, I would have probably smacked you in the face. <laughs> like, there's no way. You yeah. wait, that wasn't your childhood dream? <laughs> that, it was not Pro my ball, deer antler. Right. You know, the, like I said, the things happen. Uh, and really what happened is when uh, uh, me and Adam Greenberg, other co-founder, he played in the big leagues as well. He's got a great story. Uh, if you look up one at bat, um, he got hit in the head of his first pitch. He ever saw in the big leagues when he was with, with the Cubs. Never made it to first base. He actually had a chance uh, later on um, uh, to make it back with the Marlins. He got one at bat. And you can check out his story. It's really pretty phenomenal. And what happened, I was, I was on the same team with him, and we had both independently met a world-renowned chiropractic kinesiologist who we'd both heard of each other. I'd heard of this Adam Greenberg guy through this doc. And he was the doc was the first one that really showed me I was always knew nutrition was important. I was I'm 5'10". I'm undersized for a baseball player. I was a first round draft pick, made it up, you know, overachieved in a lot of people's eyes, and nutrition was a part of that. But man, I wasn't until I got third, fourth year in pro ball when I started getting treated by him, uh, Dr. Leibowitz, that um, I started seeing these micronutrient deficiencies and um, issues I was having, sensitivities. You know, sometimes it's it's easy with when it's an allergy to know, like, I got to stay away from this is messing my quality of life up and all those around me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when it's uh, a, a thing where it's being tested at the highest level of athletics, I mean, every little piece matters. And so that really started opening my eyes. So long story short, we ended up on the same team. I saw this Adam guy who never gave up. He ne he'd he the guy had been beaten down and just kept with a positive attitude. And I think from probably the second week on the team, we're like, we're going to do something together. I'm not sure what it is. 
ended up evolving into his story of what he was experimenting with the deer antler supplement as a whole food. And he had a crazy story where he was back in six months playing after a man, massive shoulder issue, fully uh, blown rotator, slap labral tear. I think it was like eight acres. And he was back in six months, should have been 14. So we started having some docs give it to their patients. Um, my father is a physician here in San Diego. He was giving it to his worst case scenario. And we're like, holy cow, this is these people are hurting and this is a need. Like we, we've identified a nutritional deficiency people have and we have a chance to impact the world in a, a big way or somebody else is probably going to take this product and try to sell it in some other way and, 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 and ruin it for everybody. So like we want to do it the right way. So we were looking at it backwards. A lot of people go, oh, supplements, it's a billion dollar industry. Let's take a piece. Right. And we, we had the starting foundation point of what our passion was of we want to change people's lives. It just happened to be that deer antler was the initial part of that, um, you know, the way that that manifests itself. So that's, that's what literally started out of the locker room. You know, some people started out of a garage, started out of the locker room for us. Mm -hmm. uh, briefly for someone that doesn't know what deer antler yeah. really does, like yeah. just what is it real quick? Yeah, basically in a whole food form, not a spray or an extract. Um, ours is the only one certified drug free in the world because it's in a whole food form. Mm -hmm. In a whole food form, it's basically a superfood for your muscular skeletal system. That's bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, cartilage, uh, muscles. So improve uh, muscle recovery time by decreasing the cellular breakdown and less creatine kinase um, in muscle after working out. It's the only food source on the planet that has glucosamine, sulfate, chondroitin, sulfate, hyaluronic acid, type 2 collagen, complete spectrum aminos, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, if someone would have said, I'm the smartest man in the world, I'm going to create a supplement that is specifically for what, how we get deficient in our joints and our, our connective tissue, which, you know, a lot, don't get a lot of blood supply, mm -hmm. right? They would literally come up with this product. In fact, if you look at the supplement trends, the, now you have to buy 12 supplements to get all that stuff because they've proven now why your body needs all that. The cool part with our product is it all comes in one naturally packed, balanced uh, food source. So, right. um, so that, yeah, that's kind of the philosophy of where we come from is whole foods. So that became the catalyst for us being able to our, uh, work our way into making change. Right. Yep. So it's recovery and, and joint support, yeah, yeah, more, exactly. more or less. Yep. Um, so I know since you were playing pro ball, um, you kind of you kind of worked your way into this uh, organically, so to speak. You're yeah. you're helping out a lot of your your fellow baseball players. Uh, you, you have some cool bootstrapping stories about like making deals while guys yeah. are out on the field and, and yeah. while you're in the back of the bus, like traveling from game to game. Like he he tells about how you got started. Yeah, I I mean it's kind of the uh, not so glamorous side people think the athletics or building a business from scratch everybody sees the final product in front of the lights or whatever and they think that's the cool part but you know a, a couple of good ones uh you know adam was a center fielder i was a right fielder and pitching changes typically you go and you talk whatever you're just talking about what you want to do after the game we're sitting there brainstorming our next marketing campaign we're brainstorming hey i got this new supplier here this there we're building website pages in our heads while during pitching changes so like, all right Back at it. Baseball's mm -hmm. a great sport for this because <laughs> yeah. there's like yeah. so much dead time. <laughs> He's like, man, I could really think Dude, about some other shit. You can build a business yeah. in between. So, so for all the ball players out there, think about how much time you're wasting. I mean, seriously, you're at the you park be for starting six a hours. I think the, the stat is that over the course of a three-hour game, you're actually active for about 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's thrilling, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very thrilling. You have like point one five seconds to decide if you're going to swing or not so that that time goes fast yeah but uh yeah another one um i mean this was pretty common i remember i uh, hit a smoked a line drive in the gap and uh slide into second base pop up the guy kind of puts a courtesy tag on shortstop and he goes man nice swing you're looking good lately i'm like thanks a lot i'm feeling good it's like hey, i need another bottle of the antler <laughs> I, I ran out I'm, I'm starting to hurt again can you send a bottle over i'm like sure no problem give my shin guard to the guy and, all right and uh, go in the back, hey, talk to the club, he send over a bottle, and then when he sends the cash back. Literally, like, making transactions on the field. Now You're I helping the enemy, though. Yeah, you know what? Fuck. Fellow ball players trying to get out of the grind. <laughs> 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 I always figured if I, if I can't help an enemy and still be better than them, then I didn't make it, need to make it anyway. So, yep. yeah. <laughs> that's a great lesson for anyone that's like, ah, oh, I'm too busy, got too much going on. Like, you're... You're out there making it happen, like like during the game, not like right. I'm a pro baseball <laughs> player, but during the game, like I just play baseball. Like you're, right. you're even doing it like during the game. So yeah, that's a, it's a great it's a great story as far as, as bootstrapping goes and getting up and running, like with with having a, a very busy life. Because playing pro baseball too, like 
you don't even get days off but every three weeks. There were sometimes so a game every day. Sometimes a game every day for 30, 34, 35 days in a row before mm-hmm. a day off. Wow. And that day off is usually a travel day. So you're in the yeah. plane, you're doing whatever. And that's not just the game either. Like you, you wake up, you got like you got lift weights still, you got to right. like you got to throw your pens, be your pitch, you got batting practice, like you got the whole day you are right. you are still busy. You're not just playing a three hour game and that's right. it. Like you're busy the entire Se- day. Seven o'clock game, you might be showing up at two thirty. Uh, and that's if you're not working out. And if you want to work out, you go find a gym earlier before uh, and you're on the road. I mean, then you might not be done until 1130 and maybe nothing's open in that town and you don't have any food. <laughs> you know? sure. So, man, I, I like I said, there's all kinds of stuff I'd go back and change now with the ed- education. We have the, the, yep. the nutrition things that I would change. Um, but, you know, again, that's all hindsight. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you bootstrap in the beginning, yeah. you're making deals like on the field yeah. and, and that whole deal. Then, uh, as you start to get some traction, mm-hmm. when did you decide, okay, I'm going to turn this into quote unquote, a real business and, and start to scale and start to grow? Like what did that process look like? We started, I mean, so, uh, after the first half a season, we found it in the, uh, in the all-star break, started, started doing stuff. Then that off season really got off the ground, came back again for the 2011 season and we were full on. I mean, I was I was the customer service division. Um, Adam was basically partnership acquisition. He's the he was the relationship guy, the visionary, all these pieces, making connections with where we needed to make inroads. Um, and ultimately, his kind of story of, of why we ended up in CrossFit. We were originally working only with orthopedic surgeons, and and using the product as an additional modality to helping patients. You know, to you know whether it's avoiding surgery or just giving them another option, right? Because mm-hmm. um, in the forward, proactive orthopedic surgeons were loving it because of the results they're getting, and ultimately their patients liked their work better because of it, right? Mm-hmm. So CrossFit ended up happening, and that became more and more time consuming. But as we went, you know, it was like okay. Do we have people call our cell phones? No, there's systems that are in place. There are, there are very cheap options out there of online software that you can turn your inbound calling into a very systematized approach and have it scheduled at certain times. Because I think one of the biggest problems, especially you talk about like the busyness and fitting in stuff, we, I didn't do a great job, but you could ask my wife. It took a few years to start setting up any kind of boundaries between personal life and business. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's this view in America, which is there, it's on one side, it's, hey, let's work hard. We're going to work harder than anybody else. And that's a positive. But on the other side, we don't put any boundaries up. And that kills us because if we're going to keep our passion and keep focused at the business, we have to have some kind of... You know, some people watch birds for six hours, and that's what they <laughs> need. <laughs> but seriously, he that needs boundaries with that. that <laughs> I know. That, that's One part of it. Max. This is actually an intervention. It's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> we brought Danny here today to talk to you about your bird problem. <laughs> you thought it was about <laughs> antler. It was about birds. We're well, not you know, actually recording this. Yeah, so it, you, it, it's hilarious. <laughs> this, is, this is what you guys choose to have an intervention over. <laughs> <laughs> we, we pick all, our battles. Hey, we all have... <laughs> <laughs> Different size problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, super common, right? The entrepreneur, yeah. especially yeah. when you're just getting started, it's just go, yeah. go, go. Yeah. It's you know, I'm I'm answering text messages and phone calls and, and sending emails at 11:30 at night on a Wednesday yeah. when I shouldn't even still be awake, let alone I should be up maybe hanging out right. with my wife or you know right. whatever. Yeah. There's just no boundaries, right. and then until you kind of burn yourself out a little bit or your wife starts giving you some some right. reality checks, and you have to start reeling it in yeah. and just become more efficient. And that's usually where the systemization yeah. really yeah. starts to become very apparent that if you really want to continue to be able to perform at that rate, but you now need to be able to do it in half the time right. because you're not just going to work three extra hours in the morning, five hour, extra hours in the evening, you need to be more efficient. You need to be way more effective and, and using systems for scheduling, yeah. for your marketing efforts, your sales efforts is, is the only way to truly break into that 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 realm of, of performance with realistic time boundaries in yeah. your life. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that putting boundaries in is forcing creativity that's never going to exist otherwise yep. because however much, have to make it happen. however much time we give ourselves, we'll completely fill it up. And when we start putting boundaries there and then also financial boundaries, I think a lot of people don't pay themselves well enough in the beginning. And I, I think a lot of it's like, well, I'm going to put the money back in the business. And over time, what I've learned is you know, put those boundaries, even financial boundaries there to force the creativity, to, to look for the efficiencies. And are we being as effective as we are, a, as we can be, mm-hmm. you know, hundred yeah, percent financial boundaries are called a budget. Usually. Yeah. yeah. Probably have, have one a budget. Of those. You, usually that's more painful than our time, but it's, we usually put a financial boundaries before our time. And I, I love what you said about creativity because when you don't have any boundaries in your time and you don't actually mark out like these are my normal hours, understanding I'm going to blow past it a lot, but at least something, right? Mm -hmm. Then you end up kind of, you don't know how to say no to things 
because right. you think you have this magical extra time, right? Mm -hmm. my, when people my, say extra time, I laugh. Yeah. Right. It's But we all fall into that. We fall into it with everything. Unless we literally budget for it, like you said, it gets used up. Same thing with our budgets. Mm -hmm. But with our time, w and once you figure that out, I have found my productivity went, I wish I could quantify, but it, it went up dramatically when I said, I'm going to start at this time and end at this time of yep. my day instead of it just being this, I'll just get stuff done. Unbelievable. Uh, learn to say no to stuff. Learn to be more efficient. Started looking for other sources because I think as an entrepreneur and as the hard, hard work, uh, it's a it's the same thing that drives us. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that helps us be successful, but it's also our blind spot to, that we can't see ourselves. And that's the pride of like, I'm an entrepreneur. I can do all things. Look at me because I've done it. Look at I've got to this point, right? And I, that's the hard part to get over is I'm not good at everything and nor should I be. Yeah. And then, and then, to not forget what our strengths are. I mean, if you only want to work in your strengths, you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. Go hi get hired by somebody who is only going to use your strengths. You're gonna step outside of that a lot, and it's gonna stretch you. But how can quickly can we get outside of living 80% of in our weakness and 20% in our strength to where we're 80% in our strength and only 20% in our weakness? Um, the quicker we can do that by systems, by partnerships, by whatever those methods are. Um, the quicker the better. I mean, that, that, that became the point when we started really being able to grow is when we turned over, it's not even the lower level stuff because that almost sounds like it's not as important, mm -hmm. but the th just being able to step aside from the day-to-day -day operation pieces when we turned over, for me, it was turning over call center to people who were trained at it. Could it probably do it better than me with all the input that I had gathered over the first year to hand it to them, right? It was taking product knowledge and being able to turn it over to somebody to design it to, to, to actually create a packet with it better. So I wasn't trying to m make something on, you know, on a Word doc, right? Mm -hmm. So those pieces ended up freeing time to be able to think more creatively, right? Get outside of the, you know, you, you're so deep in the trees, you can't see the forest. Um, being able to get more creative by stepping outside into uh, the big picture by getting some of those other little things taken care of. What was uh, some of the first systems you put in place and what happened in your life that mm -hmm. made you want to do it? Was this something that you read in a book and you're like, oh, we should just put systems in place? Or were, was there pain created <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a breakthrough to go, oh, fuck, I guess I should do this. Pain, I, I would say mainly pain. Yeah. Pain, pain has been my biggest teacher. Mainly pain. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if it's just men or if it's just me. Yeah, so good. We're in it together. <laughs> um, I, sometimes you kind of like think everything's fine until a, a a certain piece of it hits the fan, whether it's personal or whatever. And like I said, I, I thank God for a really patient wife to put it through and to, to be strong enough to tell me things. Cause a lot of times we, she's able to show me things, not in a do this or else, but as like, Hey, I'm, I'm your best friend here. And I'm looking at this going, this isn't good. That was some of the biggest teaching points where I was able to step in. And then once I saw it, I finally saw it in myself, just making me aware. Then I was able to help even some of the other people in the company, different processes. Um, and uh, I'll say, I mean, I told you that the first challenge we ran, we, we, we developed this nutritional online challenge platform for exactly the same reason we're talking, it, to alleviate gym owners who are trying to run nutrition who aren't nutritionists, trying to create a program when they already have their head, they're already up to here, so why bury themselves? So we created a platform that people could jump on and it's turnkey. Well, the first time we ran it, we had no systems in place. We were just putting it together. Uh, I Thanksgiving Day, I, I had dinner for an hour. I was up at 3 a.m. that morning, had to leave Thanksgiving Day early, and I was working until 5 a.m. again. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live like that. That's a pain moment. That showed me, hold on, we got some problems. We need to clean some stuff up. We need to think of things more, um, more system -wide. And it's not an overnight thing. You don't just go like, oh, found it. There's no one magic bullet that sort of makes a solution for every, every little thing you're going to deal with. But, man, like what you guys have going on, there are so many systems in place that you don't have to reinvent every, every wheel. And then you can focus on, again, what stuff makes you special. Yeah. And I think for gym owners or anybody, we think, I don't want to put systems in place because then I'll be robotic. Then I won't be creative. Then I won't be uh, who I am and I won't be able to free flow. No, you plan so well. And you have all this stuff taken care of that you can use more energy on the things that are more important. Yeah, yeah. it enhances the creativity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the structure creates Absolutely. the freedom. It right? is so the backwards. The creates the freedom yeah. so that you can actually start to be creative and, and stay in your lane of genius rather than constantly getting distracted or constantly having to do the other 80% yeah. versus staying, yeah. it, it being uh, your 
eighty percent in your genes. It's totally backwards thinking. Yep. Yeah. Hundred totally percent backwards. I want to. I mean, you guys have an innovative product, so yeah. it makes sense. It's like, okay, we have an innovative product. We m- might not need to be like reinvent the wheel for everything else in the business. I think it's right. good to like, oh, this is the one thing that we do really well that's mm-hmm. that's unique. And then when you guys started implementing these systems, I want to hear about maybe the first three, four, five systems you put in place that, you know, maybe it was just really simple things and how you started uh, integrating that into the business. Uh, let's, let's go over that after we uh, take a break, though. Okay, great. My name is Scott Picucci. I'm the owner of uh, the recently opened CrossFit Displains. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of working with Angelo Cisco and uh, taking on this venture of opening up my own gym. So I mainly uh, worked with other coaches and uh, did the scheduling, programming the workouts of the day, taking on all the fitness related um, responsibilities of the gym, but not really too involved with any of the business side of things. So um, in doing so, I kind of had this uh, passion and this drive and I had this idea that I wanted to give the athletes more. And uh, in order to kind of implement my vision, I decided to, that I wanted to open up my own CrossFit gym. I had the vision of what I wanted to create. I had this uh, drive to, to uh, implement these ideas that I had, but I didn't really have any direction. I didn't really have uh, a path on how to get there, to get me there. I started thinking about like a five-year plan and where I wanted to be in five years. I knew where I wanted to be, but I didn't really know how to get there. Um, so that's kind of when I decided to team up with Angelo and, and uh, take on his help to as a business coach to help me uh, get to where I wanted to be. In working with uh, Angelo, he, he really was an instrumental part of helping me to get where I am now in uh, creating this, this place. And he gave me the knowledge, uh, he gave me the guidance, and he helped me learn how to actually implement uh, my vision and to create the gym and the community that I wanted. He was able to help me to help take me from that place where I was a coach with a vision uh, to actually fulfilling my dream and opening up my own gym. And now I have this uh, 5,000 square foot facility that I'm able to uh, host and uh, workouts and foster this community and start to build and continue to uh, build upon this community that I wish to create. Originally, with Angela's help, I was able to open up um, a gym, starting off opening up the doors on day one with over 50 members. And uh, we're continuing to growing at a great rate, great pace. Uh, after only two weeks in, we're already over 65 members. Anyone who's looking to open up their own gym or even just to take their business to that next level and hiring uh, or getting with a business coach, uh, just like somebody that has the tools and knowledge like Angelo's Cisco has um, and really helping you take your business to the next level. And we're back with Danny. (laughs) I want to find out. We want to find out. Uh, We were talking about systems, but I mean, we could also think about technologies and tools. And um, and why do you, you were, during the break, you were talking about being able to use tools instead of hiring new people, getting things done more quickly, or having to hire more people. I think we're in a place uh, in business, and it, it being 2017, where uh, we used to have to hire two or three people to handle something, but now you know, just a, a simple uh, piece of software can manage that. Yeah, I mean, it can be a combination. It depends on everybody's unique situation. Uh, I mean, in a gym, or a gym perspective, I know people spend 12 hours a week mopping the floor. So they go, man, I should buy one of those machines and mop it in five minutes, right? That's the right choice for some. Like Maybe a little riding lawnmower. <laughs> <and mopper>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it dep- every business and every circumstance is different. So you have to look at it from a not me perspective. Um, you know, there's there's leadership by by abdication, right? And that's where you just get rid of it, right? And you don't even like care about it. You're like, oh, I, I, I hate cleaning bathrooms or whatever. And you never look at it. You never know if it's been cleaned the right way, right? Mm-hmm. Or there's... Um, by delegation, leadership by delegation. And that's a whole different story. That's involved interactive. So if, whether it's a person or a system, 
you still got to oversee it, right? Um, so that's going to look different. Everybody has to be willing to look in. And like I said, I wish somebody had told me this stuff a long time ago. It would have saved me a lot of hassle. It would have saved the company you know, lots of money, right? Be, that's part of the deal. Well, what I find is a lot of people were trying to tell me a lot of things. Yeah. I just wasn't hearing it. Well, yeah, too. Uh, <laughs> again, yeah, if that, it, ha- that happens a lot where I'm probably hearing the same piece of advice today as I did five years ago. I go, right. oh, yeah, totally. Five years ago, I was like, that guy's an idiot. That's why we all need to take a little bit more time and watch some birds once in a while. That's then right. I'm serious because I say you get so bogged down with it and you don't even have time to think about getting ahead. I mean, if you think about, yeah, that's great. I'll figure out a solution later. That's a huge trap. Yeah. I'll just figure it out later when I have more time. Like you won't have more time <laughs> unless you do it now. So start budgeting some time. Start taking ten percent of your time. Start with that and say you're not filling that up. That's your business development time, right? That's the point where you're going to work on your business, not in your business. I, I didn't make that term up, but that's we get caught in that trap all the time. All there's the time. A, there's a, a common conversation and uh, you know uh, something that a lot of people also say, which is a lot of people when they say I can't afford to do something, they can't afford the time or the money mm-hmm. to get something in their business, that what they really mean is they can't afford not to. Right. It's usually the people who say, oh, I can't afford to do that. Instantly, that, that sends a red flag up for me. It's like, oh, they actually really need this if mm-hmm. they're saying they can't afford it. Sometimes you need somebody to intervene and pull you out, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. the pain teaches you first. Hopefully, you have a support around with a, a mentor, somebody, a coach, whatever, that is willing to grab you. <laughs> And say, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the entrepreneurs yep. that yeah. I find that move really f- quickly, people are like, oh, how does, that, how does that person become so successful so quickly? It's usually because they're coming at it from the nine se- mindset of, oh, I don't have the money for that, which means I can't afford not to do it. Yeah. And, and yeah. That, that type of mindset, that person goes and finds it and makes it work. And then, mm-hmm. they, and then it ends up, that's what builds the machine, the mm-hmm. business. And so I think a lot, the people who are stuck in the mindset of, I can't afford it, so I'll have to wait. Or I, I can't afford the time. I'll have right. to wait. Yeah, those are, you know, that until that, that switch flips for people, they're usually experiencing more pain. Right. And I got a little analogy that I think it works on a company-wide basis, but also a specific project basis. So, like, any, I wish I had some, some tennis balls here, but anybody can hold a, a tennis ball. Anybody can hold two, right? You could probably toss both of them up kind of simultaneously be fine. Once you add a third one, you cut off a whole bunch of people can't do that anymore, right? So some people can juggle three. Cool. I can juggle three. I can juggle four, to be honest. Oh, shit. Right? Yeah. I should pull, I should, I should pull it out right now. It's no. all that extra time and <laughs> on the field. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, it's part of some athleticism training, ambidexterity, stuff I was doing about when I was playing. But once you got four, there's very limited number of cool things you can do with four. You're just trying to keep them up. Now, if you go to five or six or seven, once you get to eight, there's probably only a handful of people in the world who can juggle eight balls at one time. Now, is any one of those balls that important more than the other? No, it's just the fact that that person, that one person, put a million dollars point in of failure. Balls, yeah. Sure. <laughs> then if, I'll, do, I'll, I'll go with you. I'm going to roll with you here. <laughs> if, if one of those balls was worth a million dollars, do you think you should be juggling that with a bunch of ones that cost a dollar? Fuck no. No, you got to put some time into that. Right. So that one should be taken off and put somewhere else. Put ball in my the point is there's nothing unique about any one of those balls, but by adding eight of them at one time, now it's this magical thing. Look at me. Look how many balls I can juggle, right? It's that pride thing that pops in. So the quicker we can go, hold on a second, let's break this whole thing down into bite-sized pieces, whether that, again, whether it's one project, which we did with our challenge series, we had to do that because in order to make it work for thousands of gyms in a year, like we had to figure out how to make it more efficient, right? How to make it a higher quality product by making it more efficient. We could create more solutions. We could add meal plans because we had the technology figured out. We could, all this stuff, right? And you can ensure that the quality is the same. So then we take this piece out here, this piece out here. Now I'm back down to three balls. I could go between the legs. I can go behind my back. I can go in a circle. I can go off the ground. I can do all kinds of sweet stuff with three because now it's manageable again. Mm-hmm. The hard part, again, is don't talk to me. I can't even think about it because if I, if, I, if I don't take my eye off of one of those, they're all falling down. That's the, that's the spot where we have to be aware quicker than we normally are and find a way to say, no, no, I need to figure out how to get some of these things out. Again, could be a system, right? It could be... 
uh, a software. It could be a person. It could be somebody at the gym who you're bartering services for, right? It could be. Which we uh, don't recommend. <laughs> it could be a m- variety of things. But the point is, get back to where it's manageable, so you can be focused enough and to be able to keep your eyes as the owner of your business to see the direction and to be the the CEO mindset that you have to have. Mm-hmm. You know. So, so when you, when you delegate to your to your team. How much do you oversee them? What, what's the communication look like between you and the person you're delegating to? I, I think it depends on what the project is, right? How important it is. If it's a million-dollar ball, it's going to be different than if it's a two-dollar ball, mm-hmm. right? Um, but ultimately, I try my, you know, the idea is to, to lead by delegation, and that means oversight. That means educating the person. It means understanding the why, right? If somebody has a question about brand guidelines. You don't just go like, what the heck were you thinking? That's not approved. No, I want you to understand. Here's why. Here's why the different backgrounds and the colors and consistency is important. Now you understand. Oh, I, I get it now. Mm-hmm. And then they feel a part of it. So there's an education piece because then they're going to do a better job the next time. And they're going to enjoy it. They're going to feel a part of it. So whenever we are, we have somebody new in a, in a spot, it, I can't expect them to be creative in their own position or to innovate within their own role unless we give them some leeway to be their own leader of that situation. But at the same time, if you just dump it and leave it, that makes them feel abandoned. <coughs> it's going to make them feel, uh, you know, like you don't really appreciate. You're just trying to give them the, the, the junk work. Cause most of us, um, most of us will give away all of the pieces that we hate about our job to whoever. Mm-hmm. And that's dangerous too, because then what do you, <laughs> it's not real nice. And the reality is, if we're going to build up leaders behind it, they, they need some stuff that they can actually manage and, and work well. So I, there's a, depending on the situation, how much oversight do you need over that person or that role? Depends. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, pr- I try to not make it seem as if I'm the boss or whatever. Like I, I have literally in our own company, I've put myself below people in certain regards so that they can, they can build it up in certain ways. And it's been good. So there's some ra- ways I'm like, I'm an executive, but I also defer because I put, you know, we help that the, the executive can put that person in a role higher than me. Yeah. Right? One of the things that I've been doing a lot lately is if something's not getting done the way I'd want it to be, then I either need to give better feedback mm-hmm. or better instruction in the first place. Right. It's like, oh, why didn't this turn out the way I wanted it? Oh, I didn't give good enough instruction. Right. So instead of getting mad at the person for not understanding what it was that I wanted to happen, like, okay, all right, I need to give, I see this, I need to give them feedback on, okay, this is... Like, I like to ask them why they did it that way. I'm like, okay, well, let's not do it that way. Let's do it this way and explain to them why it needs to be done that way. And then also checking with myself, okay, I could have given better instruction mm-hmm. from the very beginning. So always getting refining that skill yeah. in itself, which is challenging for, for someone like myself uh, because I'm not as detail-oriented as a lot of other people tend to be. So that's something that I've personally had to get better at. Yeah. What are, are there some things that you've had to improve on that that uh, you, you've had, I guess, things that were not strengths that you had to really put focus into? If you'd have told me that I'd be coding uh, HTML into websites and sitting behind a computer for eight hours, I'd be like, no shot. That's why I'm doing my own business. I'm not doing that for anyone else. So I ended up spending more time. So I hmm. I think you just, you you're a, you got to be athletic. I mean, all, it's like you, in a mindset of being able to be athletic and move. I know me personally, one of the things that I can get caught up in is sometimes caught up so much in the detail that I lose track of the vision, which is cool because Adam balances me out in that, right? I can get so caught up in that that I forget um, to enjoy it. You know, that, that that's just by be getting overwhelmed and, and learning the blind spots, right? I didn't realize at the beginning of the company that I would try to juggle six balls and now I can recognize when I got four and now that you know I'm I'm still learning right like how do how quickly can I get rid of that one or, or oh, how, yeah. how can I well, it's like say say I have a list and I've got 12 different things on the list when there's 12 it's uh, overwhelming but if I can just go look I'm not answering a call I'm going to book this four hours off and I'm going to knock four of these off then I only have eight that seems right. Mm-hmm. So instead of just working on a little bit of everything, taking something all the way to completion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think sometimes people think that it's really complex, but there's a, a piece that can be really simple and low tech. Just simply having checklists. Mm-hmm. It can be on a paper that you stick up on the board that every day these things need to be done. How can I be certain that I'm creating that baseline? Uh, you know, take the gym that it's mopped. The weights are put away. 
there's toilet paper on the toilet paper roll, right? There, there's these things that people will expect every day when they come in. And if those aren't done, they're not sure what they're going to get that day. And that's super important. The coach is going to be on time, whatever. And so just by having a checklist, there's nothing crazy about a checklist. It's just writing down what needs to get done and then making sure it gets done. Mm -hmm. And literally, that's a system. Systems don't have to be this big, glamorous thing that is complex. A system is anything written down that can be followed. You, know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have the tennis ball example. I've heard it said a different way, slightly different, where instead of tennis balls, they, they, they say problems are monkeys. Okay. So like if you're the executive and you have, like, you have your, o your office, someone comes in, they got their monkey on their shoulder, and th they say, I got this problem, and then the monkey jumps off their shoulder onto your desk, and yeah. if they leave without their monkey, then you got a monkey in, in your room. Right. Okay. Everyone does it all the time. You keep taking people's problems from them and right. fixing them yourself. Eventually, your, your whole office is just covered with monkeys. Right. You're running like a zoo. <laughs> you're running a zoo. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. For sure. <coughs> uh, another cool framework that I heard about recently, I, I was actually just talking to Marcus about this, um, about, about YouTube. Um, the, the model that they use for categorizing their people, um, they have this kind of four-stage model where it's, it's P, S, uh, H, and E. And so it's problem, solution, how, and execution. And so by ranking your people like that, you know, some people, they can, they can only be told, hey, here's the problem. This is the solution. Here's how you need to fix it. Now go execute. That's like the lowest level person. Mm -hmm. but some people you can say, here's the problem. Here's the solution. Go figure out how to fix it and then execute. And some people above that, they say, here's the problem. I don't know what to do or, or not. It's not my job to fix it. You right. figure out the solution and yeah. how to fix it and then go execute. And then yeah. some people, like the highest level people, the people that are usually running companies and whatnot, they can figure out what the problem is. They know what the solution is. They know how to do it and they know how to execute. That's great. And so you need to know who you're talking to when you're, when you're building a system for somebody. Or maybe you don't, ha you don't even have to build the system. That's, that's building a system in a lot of cases right. is the how. Mm -hmm. Like, here's the problem. Here's the solution. Go build the system and implement. What about the people who can identify the problem but can't come up with solutions or execute? Oh, those, those are the luckiest people. Those are the people. <laughs> they, don't have to do any, they don't have to do the work of fix it. They go, ah, oh, well, not my job. You fire those <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Yeah. yeah. And there, there probably will be people like that. Some people can find problems all day long, but they don't know what to do about them. Yeah. But, but still, that there's definitely value in, in knowing what to fix. Sometimes in, in the gym setting, a lot of times that's your clients. Your For clients sure. will come to you yeah. and say, hey, this thing's fucked up, or why, why don't – you know, how can we know our t-shirts in stock or, you know, why do we change the schedule or whatever? They're identifying the problems, and then you have to figure out what the solution is as the owner. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think what's cool is when you when you treat it that way, and, and it's truly the people are not just – people can tell when they're a pawn or they're a part of something. And I think, again, getting back to why did you start the business in the first place, that that the vision has to resonate all the way down. Mm -hmm. it, it should resonate to if you have a janitor that comes in. I believe – that that janitor, when they walk in, they should kind of resonate. They should understand what the place is about. It should it should be that evident. Um, it doesn't have to be a full-time person. But if 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 person's just there to just get a paycheck and to check off a certain list, there's roles and things for that. But that's not the kind of organization I want to run. That's not the buy-in that I want to get. I want people to actually feel like they're a part of something, that they're doing something, and they're coming to work not just to ch check in and check out. Yeah. And what's cool is when you do that, they teach. I learn more from other people I work with, and people that we learn. I mean, I, I learn more from other people than I do myself. I don't make it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, being being a part of something, I think, is really important. Uh, an, an extreme example of that was, uh, I believe, it was in the book, The Paleo Manifesto. They're trying to get people to follow checklists, and uh, they were trying to get doctors to follow checklists for for like washing your hands and, and mm -hmm. patient prep and whatnot. And the doctors were really, really, really resistant to all these practices of, of hygiene, something as simple as, like, how to exactly wash your hands. Mm. And they, they had shown that if you follow this procedure, then infections are decreased by something really, really high, 80 90% or whatever, and doctors still didn't want to do it. And patients are getting real problems and potentially dying due, due to this, uh, the doctors not following the checklist. And the doctors still were just like, nope, we're not doing it. Like, it's like an ego hit to say that, like, I'm a doctor, but I still need, like, to follow directions to wash my right. hands. Um, However, the the other the other side of that was for airline pilots. They give them them checklists to follow because if they don't follow, if you don't follow the checklist, you're more likely to, to crash the airplane. And the pilots, being directly involved and having a direct consequence right. of, mm -hmm. of not following a checklist, were like, "Oh yeah, we will definitely do that. Yeah, like, we are 100 percent bottom. We'll follow it like step by step by step." And they're like, "Pilot adoption was like 100 percent, and doctor adoption was like five percent. <laughs> it was something totally totally opposite." So yeah. being, being a part of something. And understanding like the implications and having those implications actually affect you is, is vastly important. Yeah. And that's just buy-in. How much buy-in do you have? How much buy-in do the, those in your company have? 
Mm. Are there special ways that you create that buy-in? I mean, we are constantly trying to help people see what the what the goal is, right? Is not we want to make money. We want to be a successful business because with that, that gives you the power to expand, to do more, to help more people. I mean, at the end of the day, you you run a charity that that's great. Charities are awesome. We want to be able to run this so that people are feeling that you know from the p- products that are there or the the money we're able to give to charity is making a difference and that people are a part of that and that they're growing. I, I so I feel like with with the way that um, we have tried to build up our employees. I mean, and and people who are literally a part of it. When we call it a family, we call it the Lurong Living family, and we literally feel that way. And I mean, it it's comes from a belief that it's more than the business. The people are ultimately what makes the business run. And it's not. That's where people get hesitant on systems because they think it's impersonal or whatever. Again, by having those systems in place empowers the people to do more of what makes us special right so i think it, it literally it can be everything from like the rewards like for re- for sales reps on a weekly basis of who generates more revenue and get a gift card right i mean whatever it is it can be a lot of things but i think beyond any of that if people people don't feel like they're cared about and that they're actually valuable like, like the abcs you're accepted you belong and you can contribute i mean it's the same thing that played out in a locker room because you show up at a new team right you get moved to different levels Right, I remember. I remember. I, I got called up to the, the big leagues from Double A, and it was a interesting environment. Didn't hear a lot of. It was just interesting. They're just like, all right, you know, here, here, here you go. You're in. Okay. Um, there is a certain piece where you can see managers in the big leagues that are handling young rookies. Like, look at the Cubs. I love. I actually, when I watch games, I look at half it. The storyline is over a course of a season. It's not in a game. The storyline is very different in baseball. And there are some managers who are amazing at taking young talent who are naive to what they're up against and making them feel like they are a part of the team and that they're supposed to be there, not just you're filling in because the guy's hurt. That you're a part of this team. We want you here, and you can contribute, and you belong. And if you fail, like I'm, we'll just get you better. You're going to fail. There's a different environment. We had literally... Uh, uh, there was a point where some guys would get sent down from big leagues to AAA and they'd be like, oh, sweet, now I can start having fun again. I literally heard that from guys because it's the, you know, different types of environments. And um, it's in order to get the most out of people and to create the environment where stuff's going to get done and executed well, all the stuff that we know needs to happen, keeping it focused on, on the people and how, you know, that I think that is that is critical because – People get nervous. People don't work well, well when they're stressed or nervous, right? I remember when I when, when I got called up, I was in the block room, like didn't really know a lot of the guys because I was younger. I literally couldn't even feel my feet in the batter's box first day. Digging in, like, what's going on? I can't feel my feet. This isn't good. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> I remember I, I took a pitch. It was right at my shoulder, lefty, tailing in. I'd never done this in my life. Mm. Squared it up. It was at my shoulder to hit me. Squared it up, hit it in the upper deck. Foul. Right behind me. I go, oh, calm down. Right? <laughs> But because you're in a new environment, you're in a situation that is beyond you. And I think it, it, we should push our push people in organization to, to strive for bigger things. But it's got to be done in the right in the right way. Sure. G- yeah. Making sure people are really bought into the vision yeah. and understand what their contribution, regardless if it's just the customer service rep on the front end mm-hmm. versus the, uh, uh, an executive in the company, understanding what it means in the bigger picture and how they're contributing to the, the good you're trying to do as a company mm-hmm. to, you know, whether it's, hey, we're creating this ev- extra revenue so that we can pay you guys better, we can expand this team, we can, you know, have some more people come in and help you guys so we can make a way better product. Having people truly bought into what their role is in the big machine is is critical for the companies trying to do something special. If you're just trying to crank out another widget, you can get away with the more kind of cut and dry, like, hey, this is your job. If you don't do it, you're out of here. But if someone's truly bought in and they they really feel like they're making this thing happen that matters, yeah. they're going to do their best work. And you do your if you have everyone rowing in the same direction, doing their best work, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. And that's what we all, I think, um, or at least I know all of us um, are coming from with our companies. That's what we strive to achieve is to, we want to make an impact. We want to build something special. And so you, you, you have to infuse that culture and that purpose in everything that they do. So having a system for that, and like right. you say, you're the, the ABCs, right? Making sure they, they feel accepted there, you know, and that every, it's a complete vision for them. 
as they come into a company and really kind of taking that rookie in and taking them under your wing and, and, and infusing that vision into them and that culture into them is the only way you're going to create something great. Yeah. What do you guys do for for non-work related having fun together like team retreats or do you have like team Vegas. dinners are, are you guys all virtual or are you guys it, it, all it's local it's a challenge of modern business i mean we're oh. we're all over the country mm. so I, I would say that's probably one of the the things that needs to change as much as as one of the probably the biggest things that need to change is getting us all together more often mm. again that's it's always tough it's one thing when you're physically lo in location we're in we have executives in four different states mm -hmm. um and it's great because we're all able to work in our different areas and stuff. And there's a, um, and we've figured out again, systems to make sure that works well. But, um, yeah, it, having the time together is awesome. So I love when it's regionals and games times and we all get to be together. Um, it's a nice, nice way to come together because it is, it is powerful. Face to face time is priceless. So your old team to come out to the games every year? Uh, yeah, I mean, at least, uh, at least a few of us. Yeah. The, the more like an Adam and I all see each other and, and we'll get the reps together and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's a challenge. It's definitely, again, taking the time, scheduling it, because it'll fill up with something else, scheduling time for team. I mean, I'm speaking to myself. I'm preaching to myself with that one. But, yeah, making sure that that happens on one way or another. That tends to happen on the show that, <laughs> like, the things we're talking about is usually the shit that we know we've got to – Of course. That we're working on at the time in our own business. Like, we, sure. we're not telling anybody we all figured it out, right? We're just hoping everybody learns a little from each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what about mentoring your team? Do you have, like, weekly calls with your key team members that, that aren't necessarily, like, structured, like we're in a meeting, but you're you're just there to say, hey, you know, how how you doing? What do, what do you need? You know, what's going on in your life right now? Like, uh, how can I help you, et cetera? And you're just there just to be – you know, supportive and and a mentor to teach them about business i think we it kind of flows it's fluid right we have our our normal scheduled calls for you know checkups and doing all that but i think even with the best intentions of structuring that like we will talk on these certain periods of time life happens a little bit more fluidly so i, I tend i think these conversations usually happen on a as needed basis and they you know depending on the situation you could, t you could t even when you're on the phone with somebody and you haven't seen them in three months you can tell the in the voice that something's going on totally. right you, you can mm -hmm. you know what's going on you can tell when somebody's stressed and you can try to influence you know whether it's a joke or whether it's just hey i feel you um and i think we always say like we have an ego free zone like i might be an owner of the company but i'm gonna learn from you right i that's kind of the way we approach it and um nobody's above anything right Mike, Mike, Mike's just like, you know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> said, I think he's got the Dan's power been, supply. Dan's been talking for too long. I, I'm <coughs> taking off. I was getting power for the, for the, mm -hmm. for the computer. Cool. Well, what is next for you guys right now? Where, where, where are you heading in the next couple of years? Yeah, uh, I mean, we've, we've expanded now our, our product line beyond, beyond just the, the deer antler, and we've got a wild Alaskan cot Omega fish oil blend. Uh, which we're really excited. We didn't, again, this is kind of a, a good lesson is we knew we wanted a fish oil. We could have come out with it two years ago, but we didn't want to come out until we were ready to come out with what we felt like was the best thing available until we knew we had the right source, the right formulation, the sustainability, all of that. So there's a certain amount of, uh, you got your dots connected like we talked about, but also the timing uh, and understanding that it's better to make sure you have the things in place than to just run ahead. Sometimes it's great. You just got to go and see what happens and pick up the pieces. But if you push forward, like say we come out with, like I said, if we didn't have our stuff together when we came out with the deer antler and we didn't have our exclusive suppliers locked up, somebody could go, all right, that's Good cool. Idea. You guys made some space. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to copy it. And I'm just going to push it hard because you left all the space where you guys went and then kind of left a void. The void is always going to get filled by somebody. I want to be the one to keep that vo the, as little void as possible. So, um, so we came out with that, the, the fish oil, uh, wild Omega plus we've got the adrenal support and the elite energy. Um, and, uh, our challenge series is, is huge. Um, we've, we've run through, we've, had over 60,000 CrossFit athletes go through that challenge series now. And nice. for those of you who don't know, it's, it's a combination of nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle all in a nationwide comp competitive environment. So it's for an affiliate owner, it's the turnkey solution. So no longer do you have to figure out what your rules are and your challenge that you want to run. No longer do you have to spend the time to figure out where in your schedule you're going to lecture your, your classes on nutrition. Um, and now you don't have to try to keep people accountable on their own and kind of throw something together. Our platform was built literally on the specifications of 
because we had all these affiliates across the country who are using our products and were integrated that way and they knew they trusted who we were because of what we stood for and the, the values and quality of ingredients so when we came out with this it was an easy solution oh yeah man you're gonna save me so much time so we have some affiliates who are like i have no idea anything about nutrition great you're a great trainer stick with what you're good at mm -hmm. jump onto the platform and now you're going to provide again you're going to save yourself headache but it's not just a selfish thing by saving the headache they can then give a better tool and better resource better experience better results for their 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 clients at the yeah. end of the day who are they going to love are they going to love lurong living or are they going to love their 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 trainer and their their coach they're going to love them we're fine if they get all the credit that's cool you used our platform we all worked out well together we have changed lives. They're going to love the affiliate owner for it. It's just we're giving them now this tool. So as we've gone, we've created more and more tools. We now have three challenges a year when it was just one. We've now added like a macro focus piece to the classic diet. So whether you're just wanting to track your quality of your foods versus actually tracking your macros, we have two solutions now. And they're all built in, integrated. You get meal plans with shopping lists. So literally it's like I've, I'll go into places and, and somebody will raise their hand. They're like, can I just stop you? I'm like, Sure, interrupt my pitch. The, the guy was just like, it's dummy proof. Just do it. That's what we get. You literally could walk into the thing not knowing what to do as an athlete and be fine. So we, we have weekly workouts that are programmed. We work with guys like Neil Maddox and stuff with the programming. Um, we have some great nutritionists and dietitians that kind of help helps establish their, our guidelines. And now we have 60,000 people worth of results. And we know, it's, you know it works. And we've also proven that you can clean your diet up and improve performance. You don't have to do either or. Mm. Uh, which is really cool because people often think if I eat clean, I'm just weight loss. People forget that the same nutritional principles that cause weight loss done in the right quantities, right, actually help muscle gain because th the body runs on quality nutrients. So kind of our philosophy is no matter how clean you eat, you could have a perfect diet if that existed, right? But even with that, you're still going to have holes. You're still going to have deficiencies. There's you need still that sourdough. There <laughs> <laughs> there's still going to be, uh, you know, chinks and you know, broken links in the chain. And so that's where these supplements come in, right? 99% <coughs> of the population is deficient omegas, right? Omega-3. Uh, we found about 90 to 95% of people are deficient enough in the nutrients that are in deer antler and are in the, uh, Lurong Living Essential that they'll experience dramatic results within 30 to 60 days. That's huge. People are running around broken, hurt, whatever, thinking that's just the way it is. So we reject the status quo and say, no, you weren't good. Before you started CrossFit, before you started working out, eating clean, you were okay with this level of life. And now it's raised up here. You can never go back. But there's still more to go. And that's where these things come into place. So, um, yeah, so it ends up being a perfect thing for affiliate owners who have no idea with nutrition. We also have a whole bunch of affiliates who are like, look, we ran successful challenges. We were good business people. But we'll never run our own again because now they're like, wow, that was so nice. That was so easy. My athletes got more, all this stuff because of, again, if we can build it for that works for a thousand, we're, we're focused on it and it would be something extra they did. So we're able to provide something that they wouldn't get otherwise. Yeah, even for those who did it well before, right. we used to do them successfully at right. active. It's one less tennis ball. Mm -hmm. it's get, let's take less less on so we can do the core and most important things better right? right which is take care of your members and we all know as gym owners that nutrition is such a huge part of the results that we right. get for our clients but most people are coaches not necessarily nutritionists right and even though we may know enough to help you it's still going to detract from what i really need to be doing which is focusing on the training and my right. coaches and the the facility and putting toilet paper on and right. all exactly. that fun stuff. <laughs> Remember, it's the bottom of the pyramid, right? right? It's the bottom, and yet how much time do we spend on it? Exactly. Yeah. And, and again, that's kind of the innovation. It doesn't take us away from our focus and our goal and our original objective, right? It's like if a gym adds boot camp. That doesn't take away from your, your objective at a gym. It's an, a piece that fits into your, your philosophy to get you and the business and your athletes where they need to get. Yeah. So it, it's, it's kind of an extra thing. That, that's what we're doing, and we're pushing hard with that. We've been doing it now since 2012. And it keeps growing. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, like I said, the, the big thing for us is it's like, please, just let us help you. Like, that's why we're here. That's why we built it. Everything that people see in the challenge is based on some of our own ingenuity, but a lot of feedback, you know, mm -hmm. that people are experiencing in real life. So Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Awesome. I think my biggest takeaway is that toilet paper is like super important. Oh, <laughs> you got to have toilet paper. <laughs> I oh, I Marcus swear to God, if I go hole. to Faction and there's no toilet paper in there when I get in there, <laughs> the worst. I'm gonna start screaming from the bathroom. It's funny the little we'll things just blame that. Kurt. It's the little. <laughs> it's funny the little things that will you know make a big difference in somebody's life. You know, you don't want somebody walking out of the bathroom. <laughs> hey, a little help. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's happened. I, Around I've, I've seen it. I've seen yeah, it happen. You got to run from one bathroom to the other. Yeah. 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 yeah that won't make your members feel good at all. Yeah, you could be nailing it with the training. You screw that up one time. Right. They're just like, you're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd waddle my way out of the bathroom. Danny, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, where, thank you. Where can people find uh, what you guys are up to? Yeah, the website's luronliving.com, and uh, there's a link there to the challenge site, but it's challengeseries.luronliving.com. Excellent. And learn about the challenge. We've got three challenges a year. Next one's in May. Uh, and then after that, September. And then uh, resolution challenges uh, in January. So fits nicely. Love to have uh, love to have you guys join us. We'll, awesome. we'll, sh we'll show you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, cool. thank you, guys. Thanks,